Hi and welcome back to the Village Shooters Podcast. I'm your host in Jabal and Sibande. This podcast is aimed at helping you and experienced traders navigate the markets and learn from other traders. My guest today is Ross Latter, founder and chief executive at Short Trading um, and author of How to Make Money on the Stock Exchange. Please do enjoy our conversation. Hi Ross, um, how are you doing? Thank you for borrowing us your time and welcome to the Village Shooter Podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much, Njabulo. It's a pleasure being here. Uh, a p- pleasure having you as a guest. Um, please take us through your journey into the financial markets. What sparked the interest and particularly into trading and ultimately into starting and running a, a, a trading education institution? Uh, with pleasure, Njabulo. Yeah, I, I have an interesting journey. I started out um, in the, the human resources department uh, at uh, one of the goldfields mines. Uh, th- that's where I'll sort of start my story. I've uh, been around the block a, a, a little while, but uh, I was in the human resources department, did pretty well in the, in, uh, in the industry, but uh, really didn't particularly enjoy um, it, uh, you know, that I enjoyed the work with the people, but I just didn't uh, like the idea of working for a boss. And uh, so I uh, started a, on a trip sort of in the, in the line of business. I, um, I actually bought a business and, uh, and ran it for a while, but uh, it didn't really work all that well. Um, but then um, what happened was I went into uh, I went into the ministry for a number of years. Uh, I was the pastor of a church uh, for a number of years in a little eastern Cape town called Barclay East. And um, Barclay East is uh, sort of there in the uh, southern tip of the Drakensberg, uh, very, very cold, right near the ski resort, uh, Tiffendale Ski Resort. And I was in the ministry there for a number of years. And uh, during that time, uh, we opened, we started a private school. And uh, this was just uh, in 1994 when uh, things were starting to change in the country. And we just felt that the uh, Model C schools were, uh, you know, were, were dragging their heels in, in, uh, in the, the entry, in entry for, for different people. And, uh, and they were making the criteria too high. And we just felt, you know what? People need education, and so uh, we we opened a uh, private school, which uh, actually grew from seven children to 140 in one and a half years. And uh, and so it it really was a, a great challenge to me and everything like that. But when my children reached senior school level, uh, our school had not fully developed into a senior school, and so we uh, we decided. Uh, to hand the school over to somebody else. It wasn't a sellable institution or anything like that, uh, but we decided to hand the school over to somebody else and uh, we moved to East London at the time. Uh, that was the big city for us, uh, having come from a farming background originally. But uh, anyway, uh, we moved to East London and um, I was looking, uh, you know, I was actually approached to start another private school um, along the same lines. And, uh, but, you know, we decided against it. And so I was in a situation uh, around about 2000 uh, where I just um, uh, was, was looking around uh, to start another business. Um, I was looking around for opportunities and um, an, an acquaintance actually came to me one day and he said to me, he said, you know what, you've, you've always been teaching people different things. Why don't you teach people how to trade on the stock exchange? And I said, but you know, I know nothing about the stock exchange. I don't have a financial background. I don't, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I've never really thought along those lines. And, um, but you know, uh, I decided to take up the challenge of teaching myself how the whole setup works, and my focus was uh, really to to uh, to help others as well. You know, I love teaching, and uh, so so my focus initially was to uh, learn the process as quickly as I could, so that I would be in a position to be able to teach 
other people how to do it and, and of course teach myself. Yeah, and uh, so what we did was, um, it was then 2002. And uh, so I learned the process. I had some mentors that would, uh, would help me. And, and, you know, of course, in those days, the internet was very, very new. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it was, uh, and we, we had a, a software program uh, that gave us uh, data on a daily basis, end of day data. And, um, and so I was using the, the software package and, uh, and using it uh, for all my information and so on. And uh, so we started our company, Sure Trading, in 2002. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, with my focus being on teaching others at that stage, I had no money to trade with myself, but very soon I was starting to trade, uh, you know, along with, uh, with my clients. And so that's how we uh, got going. And so, um, you know, not having a financial background initially, I thought that, uh, that it wouldn't work for me, but, uh, but certainly you don't have to have a financial background uh, to to be able to to know the necessity uh, of of uh, investing and and uh, and you know finding the the stock market an attractive way to generate income for yourself. So we mm -hmm. we worked the business in in the area in East London at the time, and uh, I moved to Cape Town um, more or less ten years ago now. And uh, the reason for moving to Cape Town was because my children were out of, uh, you know, out of school, out of home. And um, we moved to Cape Town mostly for family reasons, but also, you know, this type of business can be moved and can be worked from anywhere. And of course, that's, okay. uh, that is even more true these days than it was at that time. And so we now operate our business from Cape Town and uh, mostly online. Okay, yeah, that's, a, that's a rather interesting story. Um, when you started trading your own capital, did you experience any early success or um, you were hit by, the, um, by high school fees when you started out, um, when you actually started trading some capital? Um, I, you know, I learned about CFDs quite early, uh, uh, trading on leverage uh, uh, for trading, because initially, you know, obviously there was uh, no uh, products available uh, that you, where you could trade on leverage. So I uh, started trading equity CFDs um, in, yeah, when was it, about 2004, 2005. And uh, that was, uh, I, I actually had a lot of success. Um, and it, initially, so I didn't really experience uh, school fees. I'll just uh, backtrack a little bit. You know, I was introduced to, to CFDs by an ex-policeman, actually, who had done exceptionally well uh, on the market. In fact, uh, he was operating in, in Durban area. Him and his wife were both uh, in the dog unit in the police. And apparently one day his uh, wife's dog was killed in a skirmish and she just said, I'm out of here. And he actually followed uh, her out and, and left the police. And he'd heard about CFDs and, uh, and he started with, uh, with 10,000 Rand. And uh, he grew it to 1 uh, million in 18 months. And, uh, and, you know, but this was at a time, 2004, 2005, somewhere around there, uh, where, where the market was really in a fantastic rally and uh, an and upward uh, momentum. And uh, you literally at that stage could throw money at the market and it would come <laughs> back at you a hundredfold return, you know. And, uh, and so, so this guy, um, but, but having been in the, in the military, I mean, in the police, he was a very structured, very disciplined person, and uh, and he taught us um, very specific uh, trading strategies, you know. And um, and so right from the beginning, I knew the dangers of trading on leverage. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, my mentor was very specific about stop losses and never taking them out of the way, and only lo losing, well, uh, you know, three percent of your capital on any given trade. I know that is quite risky, 3% of your capital on any uh, trade. It's, it's better 
to to lose less on a trade. But uh, the point I, I want to make is that uh, we we started off with a very uh, stable strategy, uh, very specific about uh, entry level stop loss uh, profit levels and so on. And uh, so I didn't uh, do all that badly. But what I, in fact, I did pretty well in the beginning. What I did find though was. Uh, um, I, uh, I went through uh, 2016, for instance, was a particularly difficult year for us. But most of the time I was up uh, literally 100% uh, on my portfolio uh, in a year uh, for about three or four years in a row. And then 2016 was very, very difficult. Uh, and But yeah, uh, I, I don't trade for a living though, um, Jabulo. Mm -hmm. I, I teach people how to trade for a living. I trade myself on the side. In other words, uh, uh, I'm not a full-time trader. I trade end of day uh, strategies, mm -hmm. uh, swing trading, basically, you know? Yeah. Oh, got, got you, got you. Yeah, and I've, I've found um, particularly the more experienced people tend to um, gravitate towards um, swing trading. Is it, is it more to do with time? or um, is swing trading financially better than intraday trading? You know, um, it's interesting that you asked that question. Uh, what, what happened was um, during 2016, in fact, it, it, as I said, it was the most difficult uh, uh, trading time of, of, of my personal uh, career. It was a very difficult time on the market uh, for a lot of people, but uh, 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 during that year, I was actually approached by Penguin to, to consider writing a book that would help uh, people to trade on the stock market, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I wrote the book. Um, it came out early 2017, How to Make Money on the Stock Exchange. And uh, we were actually blown away by the uh, response to, our, to the book. And um, as a result of that, uh, quite a few folk came on board and so on. And, uh, and it was it was during this, uh, well, it was actually the, the, the gentleman who, who really uh, uh, encouraged me to write the book. Uh, we used to, uh, I was doing swing trading all the time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, um, but this gentleman, a chap by the name of Andre Swart, uh, he had been trading for a living for about, uh, I think, a number of years, about six years at the time. Uh, he'd been trading uh, for a living and he used to join us at our broker's offices every Tuesday morning um, because we used to uh, look at uh, opening, uh, sorry, at trading the, the Aussie, the opening of the Aussie, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, on Tuesday mornings, I used to meet with my clients at our broker's offices. And uh, this chap, Andre, who wasn't a client of mine, uh, I didn't teach him how to trade, but we had met him at a trading meeting. And he said to me, uh, he said to me, I'd love to come and join you, you know, at your meetings. Uh, he said, he said, uh, you know, um, uh, my wife uh, works a sort of horticultural business. So she was always out and about. His kids were at school. So he said, it was, it's lonely at home with just me and the dogs, you know. And uh, so he used to join us on um a Tuesday morning, and he actually uh, taught me a, a particular strategy on the opening of the Aussie, and, and this is what he used to trade uh, very prolifically. And so it was there that I learned um, how to trade a, a sort of intraday stuff. I didn't I didn't do it before the time before that time, um. and um, and he uh, when I got this email from. Uh, uh, from uh, from uh, Penguin Books, they he said to me, I said, what do you think? Do you think I should write a book? He said, you have to write a book, <laughs> which I did, you know. And and so included in that book was this particular strategy on the uh, on the Aussie, you know, and um, and so so that that sort of process introduced me, took me from swing trading only to a place where I was doing some intraday trading as well. And uh, most of it on the Aussie and, um, and, and now through that uh, introduction, I was, or that, uh, you know, when the book came out and so on, um, I actually met up with quite a few people that were already trading 
other strategies for intraday and mm -hmm. um and so uh i've i've developed uh, we've developed a handful of strategies for intraday trading as well so i do a combination of both uh, of those in javula but what mm -hmm. i do find though is intraday trading really requires a very specific uh, uh, concentration level uh, that uh, that I can't really do during the day often because you know like for instance I'm in a meeting right now with you I don't want to be in a trade uh, intraday I'd rather be uh, in a swing trade where I don't have to watch it uh, every minute of the day sort of thing you know. Oh, got you, got you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I found swing trading to be a, a better beast than intraday as well. Um, yeah. So your title of your book is um, How to Make Money on the Stock Exchange. Um, with, with your experience over the years, how do people make money on the stock exchange? And um, where does it go wrong for people as, as the success rate on whether trading and investing is, is um, relatively low compared to... Uh, with when you put together all the market participants yes um jabula i have to say that um that you know people are very attracted to trading uh because they want to earn extra income for their families and and for themselves obviously and uh and so there's a there's a high attraction level to trading and uh and and, and it's actually quite sad to see um, how many people uh, come into it thinking that, uh, you know, they come into trading with stars in their eyes, um, uh, thinking that they're going to make an absolute fortune overnight. And, and the opposite is true, unfortunately, of, uh, for most people, you know, and this is, this is where in my book, I, I was so specific. And I think that's what made it quite successful in that uh, I was I played open cards in the book. And I just said, listen, this is a lot more, it's not complicated, but it's a lot more tricky than, than you, would, uh, you would first uh, believe, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's why I was so always so specific uh, with, with uh, you know, keeping your stop losses in place and so on. But even so, people you know, they don't listen to, to their mentors often. <laughs> and they, they feel that they're just going to make it quick. And, 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 you know, so there's a lot of psychological side to trading as well. And, uh, and, you know, how you view the markets and how you view yourself as a participant of the markets and so on. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of psychology around it, which, which the initially people simply don't understand. And uh, and they can get hurt very 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 quickly and 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 unfortunately, yeah, I think both of us know that most people get hurt before they actually um, get to a place where they're making consistent profits, uh, and so and a lot of people don't survive that initial hurt. You know, uh, one of my most successful uh, traders uh, he's not uh, also not a student of mine, but he's uh, you know he's basically joined our uh, our chat groups and so on. Um, he's a he's a, a client that uses our brokerage uh, company, and that's how I got hold of him and so on. But uh, he, I said to him one evening in one of our meetings, because we have meetings every day, actually, with our clients. And I said to him in one of our meetings, I said, uh, how, how long did it get, uh, you know, what did it, how long did it take you to, um, to get to a place where you are making consistent profits like you are now? Fully expecting him to say two or three or four years or whatever it was. But he said, uh, no, it took me uh, blowing out two accounts. <laughs> and so that was his answer. That was his answer to me, and that's unfortunately, well, you know, in in many ways fortunate. But uh, you know, a lot of people they blow out an account and then they don't ever come back to it, and they just say it doesn't work for me. And whereas trading, yeah, trading might work uh, for you know doesn't work for everybody, but of course everybody knows that they need to invest. They need to learn that process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in, yeah. in your in your in your in your business um, on the education side of things, um, are there any um, common attributes amongst uh, um, traders that differentiates 
the ones that um, uh, um, end up con uh, being consistent winners and the, the, the ones that end up eventually capitulating and giving up on, on, on trading. Are there specific attributes that you've um, noticed um, on the different traders, especially coming in from uh, um, not knowing anything about the markets to making a success uh, um, uh, or rather making uh, consistent profits on, on, on the market yeah. as opposed to yeah. the one that eventually capitulates and, and, and call it quits in the trading world? Um, you know, of course, everybody is so different uh, in many respects, and everybody is the same in many respects as well. Um, <laughs> as I said, you know, people come into this arena with uh, or the space with stars in their eyes, and they and they feel that they're going to just uh, really nail the market. In other words, they're going to uh, they they and and you know, it's so prolifically advertised on on the internet as well you know just follow us and you're going to make a million in um, in no time at all out of nothing and of course that is so not true but of course people fall for that you know and uh and i think that's where our uh, my book uh, was really helpful to us in that people when they did come to us came to us with full knowledge of the fact that this is something that you not it's it's like uh, uh, taking on a new career you know Mm -hmm. I mean, where do you get an accountant or a doctor or a person who wants to study to be an accountant or study to be a doctor or study to be an engineer? Where do you get them saying, okay, I want to become a doctor. So let me have a look at a few cup, uh, a few uh, video clips on YouTube and I'm going to be a doctor <laughs> in no time at all. I mean, you know, you just don't think of that at all. But where, when it comes to trading, People have this idea that they just have to watch a you know few video clips uh, on on uh, YouTube or just follow somebody or somebody's got a robotic trader or trading system or something like that, and and they think it's going to uh, they're just going to beat the market. The market's been around for a long lot longer than me and you have been around, <laughs> and uh, and so so I, no to answer your question, I, it's very difficult to see which type of person. Uh, would give up trading uh, or which type wouldn't um, you know but uh, I think I think the people that start out disciplined from the beginning in other words um, they are sort of by nature disciplined because it, in my opinion it's all about discipline all about learning how to get to a place where you trust yourself you know because everybody I mean we we all impart strategies and so on to our students and we say you know and and, and up front uh, you need to have an entry uh, strategy and, but but you know it's easy to get into a trade but when do I get out of the trade you know at what point do I get out um, and uh, and that's the the more difficult so you have to have an exit strategy as well and, uh, and of course, where to put your stop loss. And if you do put take profits in, uh, where to put your take profit or where to move your stop loss to lock in profits if you want to not, um, uh, you know, uh, get the upside. You want more, uh, as much upside as you can. In other words, don't uh, restrict the upside. Mm -hmm. um, so all of us, you know, when we have some teaching, we all know what we have to do. But how many of us actually have the discipline when the market is doing a certain thing that upfront you had decided, listen, if the market does this, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. But you don't do it. And the reason is because, no, 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 I'm sure it's going to re <laughs> recover in my direction. Let me just move my stop loss, you know. And, and so, uh, you know, Simon Brown, and I do mention this part in my book, uh, has that uh, where there are seven criteria to... Uh, uh, perform the or execute the perfect trade, you know. Yes, yes. And uh, yeah, and I, I just, you know, that was right down my alley. And uh, and so, if everybody would just do that, uh, they would um, they would succeed in the end. Mm -hmm. But so, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, no, I'm saying I really, really like that answer. So I suppose you you uh, um, discipline is the the that key or. Uh, um, uh, that key dist uh, distinguisher, because I mean, so, so, someone, uh, someone Brown himself did mention. He did say that uh, in his mind, trading uh, um, is discipline. 
Yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, it is, that's in my mind. And, and you know, the, the market is not your enemy. You, the market is presenting opportunities all the time. But if you have this mindset that you're going to conquer this thing, uh, you'll be doing so much revenge <laughs> trading, you know. That, uh, yeah. So, so these are all things that you have to learn. And also one of the, um, one of the biggest influences in my trading career was, uh, was the book um, called The uh, Trading in the Zone mm -hmm. by Mark mm -hmm. Douglas. Uh, absolutely outstanding uh, book in my opinion. And, uh, and he does not talk about a strategy. He talks about the, uh, the, your strategy uh, just gives you the edge. That's all. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, he goes into the basically the psychological side of, of, of trading where, where you have to get to the place where you think like a trader and you have to get to the place where you trust yourself to, uh, to do what you have previously, before you even got into the trade, uh, you'd done the, the necessary work and so on, you know, to, to uh, get to a place where you, your trading strategy gives you the edge. That's all it does but that you are mentally prepared and everything like that for, for every trade that you get into. And yeah, uh, yeah. so, yeah. And a lot of people that takes a while and, and it's a, a quite a painful lesson. In fact, when I started reading, <laughs> you know, I'd been trading for a, for a good couple of years, but, uh, but when I started reading Mark Douglas's book in an in intro, I thought to myself, how does this guy know everything about me? Just not my name. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and um and so, so it's a very good book. And, and this is the thing. Uh, uh, the market is, is not your enemy to be conquered. The market is offering you opportunity on a daily basis. But you have to endure all of those uh, negatives that can come your way, you know. Uh, I mean, just the understanding, for instance, uh, that no trader on the planet makes 100% success. There are always losses with regard to trading. But what happens is, is those losses are just too, uh, too big because people are not trading according to a strategy or to a money management uh, setup. And, and that's what destroys them. You know, um, I mean, I got a call one day. I don't know if, we, if I could just tell you this story quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I got a call one day from a guy who said, I've read your book and I need your mentorship. <laughs> so I said, uh, so I said, okay, um, are, are you new to trading? You know, so he says, so he said, no, no, I'm not, I'm not new. I've been trading for three months already. <laughs> so I said, so I said, no, well, in, in my, uh, you know, that's, that's new to trading. And, um, and so I said to him, okay, well, tell me, um, uh, tell me a bit about your experience with trading. Uh, what have you been trading? So he said, well, I've been trading Brent crude oil. So I said, uh, Okay, I said, with a demo account or a live account? So he said, no, with a live account. So I said, oh, okay, um, uh, just tell me about your trading. So he said, well, I, I put 15,000 Rand into my trading account. Mm -hmm. And he said, within three days, it was at 61,000 Rand. I said, wow, that is amazing. But, you know, in my mind, I was thinking, uh oh, and I know what's coming next. <laughs> um, he said uh, 60, 61,000. So I said, so I said, that's very, very impressive. Uh, I said, um, I said, are you still trading with that money? He said, no, I lost it all on the fourth day. <laughs> I said to him, I said to him, you know, I was actually fully expecting that. I said, firstly, you know, th uh, three months is not, uh, th that's not experience. That's not being experienced. Uh, if you said three years, that's an experienced trader, but, uh, three months. And I said, you know what, you, your story immediately told me two things. Number one, you were trading too big for your account size. Number two, you were, um, you, you, you were just lucky for three days. The market went in your favor for three days, but every time he got out of a, a, a winning trade, the next trade, he would put all of his money on. And if you're dealing with leverage, well, then the market just has to move. And I said, the market moved against you on your fourth day. And he traded it from 61,000 to 5,000 in that fourth, on that fourth day. And now, of course, uh, he has to, um, 
recover from that. Well, he never became a client, so so I don't know what's happened to him. But that's uh, that's what happens to to many traders. You know, they uh, they have stars in their eyes, and they, and I always say that if you if you win big right in the beginning, it's the most dangerous thing. <laughs> you have to have perspective, you know, and uh, no trader gets it right every time. But you'll wipe out your account uh, if, if you trade like that. And so, you know, if a person tells me they will they average more than 70% of their trades or winning trades, I actually don't really believe them. Um, but most traders, 60, 40%, 60% winning trades, 40% losing trades. But it's the losing trades that are too big that will destroy your account. So, um, you know, you have to get that balance where you understand that not every trade will be a winning trade. So don't try and make a fortune on every trade. It's a process of learning. And that's where discipline comes in. Yeah. Is it, is, is it perhaps the, the, the cause of... Um such a high failure rate in trading that trading is so more often psychologically counterintuitive because um, you hear statements like um, the big, the worst thing that could happen to you is, is that you make a mistake and you get paid for it. Or um, the worst thing yeah. that could happen to you is you win big on your first day. Is, the, is that counterintuitive nature of, of trading, is, is that maybe perhaps uh, what causes this high um, uh, failure rate in trading or I'm um, missing a trick here? I th no, I think that is exactly correct, Njabulo, uh, that it's that psychological thing, you know. Definitely. That's, no. that's it. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and for you, what was the, the, or rather, when was the light bulb moment and what was the light bulb moment that turned you into a, a consistent, consistently um, 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 successful trader or consistently profitable trader? You know, um, I, I, what I have tended to, to, tended to do lately because my intraday trading is, uh, is, is very erratic at the moment. And the reason is because I'm so busy with clients and with interviews and with talks and things like that, you know. So mm -hmm. my intraday trading is, uh, um, I've, I've made great success uh, with it over time, but, um, but at the moment I'm doing very little intraday trading. So what I've gravitated towards is, is, um, is slightly longer term uh, stuff and, and not geared anymore. Um, so you like ETFs and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I'm having great success actually with, uh, with uh, exchange traded funds and trading on a slightly longer term basis. But that's purely because uh, my program uh, is very full during the day for intraday. So um, uh, from, from a point of view of a light bulb moment, I think uh, it's, it's I, I don't really recall any particular time, you know, because I mean, I've been doing this for uh, now coming on for 20 years, you know, teaching people how to trade. And so, uh, so it's, it's been a process of time uh, that, uh, that instead of a light bulb moment. No, oh, okay. Um, do you, do you any do you have any uh, worst trades um that you can recall, and what was the um key lesson that you learned from 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 that trade? Um, at one point, I was uh, uh, I was trading intraday. I was trading on a uh, an hour chart actually, and I was using moving average crossovers as as my trade and. Uh, and uh, this one particular day, I, I decided that I'm not going to listen to myself. And I'm going to wait for this to turn in my favor. And uh, that was the worst thing, the worst decision <laughs> I could ever make, because I eventually had to close it. Because not because I got a margin call or anything like that, but just it was just too painful. And I mean, that was absolutely crazy, you know, and, uh, and so, so that was my worst trade. And, and I mean, it, it wasn't a lot of money. Um, it was about 5,000 Rand, which, uh, but to me at that time was a very, very painful lesson uh, that I must just listen, even although it might turn back in my favor. What if it doesn't? What if it doesn't? 
uh, you know, possibly just another story that I could uh, relate to you is, mm-hmm. is um, I had a, a client uh, who, uh, who I taught to trade. And the first year, he was a very high net worth individual. Um, uh, and in the first year, he didn't, um, you know, he didn't make any money, but he was very diligent about learning how to trade. And then he decided that he was going to um uh, go full-time trading because mm-hmm. he was he said i was he, he was um uh in the in the uh, product uh, sorry um uh property property uh, development uh space that's mm-hmm. what his business was a very 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 wealthy guy but he was used to a lot of zeros he said and he was used to uh um you know being in 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 debt uh, in that, uh, you know, he would build projects and it would take a long time for the money to come through. And so he was used to uh, being in a negative situation temporarily. But uh, when he went full-time trading, you know, he used to phone me on a daily basis. And he said, Ross, he said, um, he said, I-, I can't really talk to my family. Uh, they, they are, um, they-, they don't really understand. And my friends think I'm not telling the truth and things like that. But he said, um, he said, uh, can I talk to you about what's happening in my trading? And I said, of course. And, and he used to phone me literally on a daily basis. And he said, today I made 30,000 rand. Today I made 100,000 rand. Today I made 60,000 rand. I mean, it was crazy. He had two trading accounts, both of them well over a million rands worth of uh, um, money in them. And then, uh, and I mean, he was making ab- absolutely amazing money. He had he would trade the announcements and uh, and he would trade uh, mostly the, the 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 DAX and the you know the indices mm-hmm. and uh, big positions and um, and then all of a sudden he got quiet and uh, and I couldn't contact him anymore and uh, he just wasn't answering the phone and uh, what had happened is that he had. Uh, he had done something which uh, which I share in my book as well is one of the biggest trader mistakes is to uh, add to losing positions. Uh, you know, because yeah, uh, you know, adding you see the trade is going against you, but you think okay, well look, it's going to turn soon, so let me add some more to this position because my entry then is averaged down, so mm-hmm. my entry becomes closer to where it is trading at the moment, and. Um, and anyway, he kept on adding to the position. And uh, by the end of the day, he'd had margin calls on both of his trading accounts and it literally wiped out about 3 million rand uh, in one day, you know. And uh, I mean, it was, it was devastating to him, obviously. But, but the tragic thing was that um, uh, I eventually found out that uh, he had tried, he had got involved in... Um, um, what is it? Uh, uh, binary options. Uh, mm-hmm. He'd been hoodwinked by somebody to think that he would make all that money back very, very quickly, you know. And literally, he had just uh, um, got greedy, first of all, because he was trading so big, made that fatal mistake of, of adding to his position and then getting involved in uh you know, these very, very, no, I know binary options are a legitimate form of trading, but Mm -hmm. uh, some of these binary options providers were, are, are, you know, hoodwink people. In fact, I went to a meeting once um, and, uh, and the guy asked me, it was a business meeting and I was asked by this particular guy. uh, He said, uh, you know, I was greeted at the door and he said, uh, tell me what business are you in? I said, uh, well, I teach people how to trade on the stock exchange, you know. So he said, oh, uh, uh, I hope you, um, uh, I see. he said, what do you know about binary options? And I said to him, well, uh, what I do know is that one of my clients lost a huge amount of money. And also I know that they are very, very speculative and, uh, and dangerous, you know. So I don't touch them at all. I don't know. I, I can't even comment on them because I haven't mm-hmm. looked into that. And... Um, so he said, he said, that's good. He said, because he said, my cousin works for a binary option company in London. I said, oh, okay. And, uh, 
and he said uh, he said he said the the money that you that you supposedly invest does not even reach the stock the stock market it's just on demo platforms and uh, they make you believe that you're making this huge amount of money and then when you lose that money that they uh, ask you for, for for more money you know <laughs> and i said well i said i said how do these people sleep at night and he said and she he said well on on bags of money of course and you see this is the thing so you've got unscrupulous uh, people out there and that's why we are so focused on on teaching our people just to to be so careful you know because the the market um over time man i tell you if you just learn the process and you and you learn the disciplines and you get uh, around the psychology of trading and everything like that uh, it it is like a an all you can eat buffet you know mm-hmm. so so you mentioned um, um you know one of the biggest uh, mistakes that uh, traders make is averaging averaging down into into losing position um what about yes. av- adding into winning position um what's your approach to that and uh, how do you maintain risk uh, or proper risk management into your portfolio as you pyramiding into positions if you do pyramid into positions Yes. No, I I'm all for adding to positions when when the market is showing you the correct signs. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I trade a, a, a what we we'll call a fractal strategy and uh and basically um when it shows me uh, there was a high point uh, and I'm going long for instance and there was a high point and then a, a small retracement, I'll place an, a, a new order at that high point. So that if it comes back again and goes beyond that, uh, I'm adding to my position. So yes, definitely, I have no problem with that at all. But of course, at the same time, if you're going to be adding to your position, you need to adjust your stop loss uh, level as well. You know, mm-hmm. so that you're locking in, uh, locking in profits uh, correctly. Because if you add to a position, then of course it averages out your uh, uh, your your starting point. Mm-hmm. And then it would mean that your break even is very much closer to where you were. And so if it comes down, you can, you can, you know, so if I add to a position, I'm always have a, a my initial stop loss, uh, locking in profits, initial stop loss at break even, mm-hmm. and then I move it up, um, you know, accordingly. Oh, got you. Got you. Uh, um, um, can you take me through your your trading strategy? What what are you looking for in the markets um, uh, when 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 you're looking for opportunity and uh, um, look to see if your edge is present in the market? Um, I have a, a couple of trading strategy. I have an end of day where I use moving averages, stochastic MACD uh, mm-hmm. for uh, end of day uh, longer term stuff. And uh, but mostly moving averages for the long term with my ETFs and so on. For my uh, short term strategy, I use um, uh, we basically price action. You know um, uh, the the candle uh, stick patterns and so on is what we uh, what we use. Um, so if I see and and of course support and resistance uh, lines. So I use. Um, for my intraday, uh, slightly different. Basically, there are breakout strategies, either mm-hmm. either breaking out of a um, uh, support level or a resistance level, um, and yeah, breaking out breakout strategies. I don't use moving averages um, during in, intraday trading oh, okay. because I'm not necessarily looking for uh, momentum. Uh, because the, the momentum I'm looking for is, is longer term momentum, you know. Mm-hmm. So for the day, I, I normally just use the candle patterns, a breakout of a, a support or resistance, whether it's a, a horizontal line or whether it's an, a line going up or down, you know, in, in any uh, direction. And then, as I said, we use the fractals as well uh, that uh, is showing you high points as time goes on. A lot of people use the zigzag uh um, uh, indicator as well, mm-hmm. uh, but that's showing you almost that's basically almost giving you an earlier sign than the fractal does. You know? oh, okay. Um, yeah. Do you do you 
first determine the direction you want to trade in or do you like to just look for a breakout and then take that breakout whichever direction that the breakout is happening um, um toward uh yes uh what i do is i look of uh if i make a um, we call it a buy box for instance it's a rectangular pattern i'm sure you've used them many times before mm -hmm. um and if it breaks out at the top i go long if it breaks out at the bottom i go short and um and my stop loss is on the other side of the range. That's my initial stop loss. And that's my, where my money management is calculated. Mm -hmm. But obviously, as it goes in my direction, I move my stop loss uh, to reduce risk uh, as, as quickly as possible. Okay, got you. Yeah. And, um, so so I, I portrayed a breakout and, and I don't decide up front uh, whether I'm going long or short. I um, basically let the market and my indicators tell me. Okay, got you, got you. Um, how do you approach um, risk and money management, and um, typically, how do you teach it to people so that it, it it's it's more of a of a, a belief system that they have? You know, you know, Mark Douglas uh, in Trading in the Zone talks about uh, um, beliefs. How how do you do you teach it, and how do you instill it as a as a as a, a, a like part of a traders' belief um, to your students? Um. You know, I, uh, I don't really know how to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's um, uh, you know, what we do is we, we try over time. But what I do is, is part of my uh, offering that I have is I have meetings with my clients every day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's basically five hours worth of uh, Zoom meetings with my clients and those who can, you know, during the day, obviously, many of them are working. Uh, another job or whatever it is, but uh, but we record all our meetings as well. So what we try and do is is um, impart. Uh, you know, we're very strict about the the stop loss, uh, about moving the stop loss and not risking more than a certain percentage of your trade. So so that in turn is basically uh, what creates an advantage for them. Uh, psychologically because uh, you know they are so strict you know um, um jabula what i do find is that when people lose money they 90 percent 95 percent of the time <laughs> is because they haven't followed their own rules and so so um you know when when a person uh contacts me uh, you know many many of them i speak to privately and so on uh, they they tell me uh, this, and you can see they're quite battered psychologically, and and so I I deal with them on an individual basis when it comes to that, and I just obviously encourage them as much as I possibly can um, to to just you know stick to their money management, keep on uh, because there is no doubt if you if you just uh, you know persevere. And you and you have those principles that you stick to, and the more you stick to them, the more the less stressful trading becomes, mm -hmm. and the more success you're going to um, you're going to have. You know, so I don't deal in much detail with the psychological side, except to input as much as I can during the uh, meetings and so on. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, um, lastly, man, how, how do people find short trading and, and particularly your book, How Do You Make Money on the Stock Exchange as we, as we close? Okay. Um, what they can do is they can go to our website. It's uh, www.suretrading.co.za. And uh, yeah, sure trading, not sure trade. They'll pick up another website somewhere. Uh, suretrading.co.za. And uh, we have a link on in there for the book uh, if they want to, or you can just Google how to make money on the stock exchange and uh, you can get it through take a lot. You can get it through loot. And, um, and of course, at any of the bookshops that you, uh, uh, you will find it. Most, most bookshops you will find it. Cool, cool. I'll, I'll leave the link to those um, in the show notes below once we 
uh, once the podcast is out. Um, Ross, thank you very much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. I really enjoyed the conversation. I hope you did enjoy it as much as I did. I, I certainly did. Thank you so much, uh, Njabulo, for having me. I really appreciate that. Cool, cool. Uh, before we close, do you wish to add anything? I, uh, I would just say keep to your, uh, you know, keep to your strategy, keep to your stop losses, trade, uh, get to a place where you learn to trust yourself to do what you have decided up front that you're going to do. So when you go into a trade, you, you make a decision, I'm going to do this. If it does this, I'm going to do that. If it does that, well, if it does that, just do. Don't have this, um, you know, we are such, uh, uh, we are so positive many times and we're so confident that it's going to go <laughs> back in our favor. And uh, just do what you said. If, if you lose out on some possible profit, so be it. But don't let your losses run. That's that's my uh, my part in my ending thought in Jabula is yeah don't let those losses run get rid of them get used to them and uh, and just keep on keep on don't give up Coco cool, cool. that's 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 indeed some 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 great advice thank you Russ for your time I really really appreciate it I leave the links to your books um, links to take a lot uh, exclusive books and links to shorttrading.coza on the show notes below. And uh, if people want to get in, get in contact with you, they'll get through that. And of course, your Twitter handles and um, et cetera. Russ, again, thank you for your time. You, for, uh, thank you for listening. Let's keep you next time on the show. Sure. Sure. We've come to the end of the podcast. Thank you for listening. Please do make sure that you don't miss another episode of the British Twitter by subscribing on your favorite podcatcher. We are everywhere when decent podcasts are aggregated. Um, join us this evening, Simon Brown and myself, trading live CFDs. Um, do check out the YouTube channel as well, British Shooter ZA on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter at British Shooter ZA. Thank you for listening. Check in next time on the British Trader. Cheers.